Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Jay God. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the movement comparison between Cold War and Modern Warfare. And the main reason this is important is because it's believed that the weapons from Cold War are gonna be transitioning over into Warzone whenever that transition occurs, whether it's right at launch, after the first season, we don't have a lot of details on it, but the rumors are that the weapons are gonna be ported over from Cold War over into Warzone. And I would expect that they would keep some of the properties and maybe change some things here and there. And I thought it was worth talking about the movement as a whole in comparison in terms of overall speed, handling and things like that because we have all the data from cold war as far as the weapons go which we'll go ahead and take a look at and then i converted all that information over to a line with modern warfare i put head to head with weapons and seen how the weapons are going to be balanced slightly different also just as a heads up i'm going to be live streaming over on twitch as part of a charity live stream for two hours from 12 p.m to 2 p.m link will be near the top of the description if you want to go ahead and check out the stream maybe show some support it's going to be for gamers outreach with basically they supply gaming stuff for kids that are in hospitals so that they can have something to do while they're in there so if that's something you guys would be interested in supporting definitely check the link near the top of the description. And there's three different ways you can help out. You can share a link to the live stream. You can actually just show up so you're an active member in there. That'll boost my viewer count, which will allow me to get seen more by more people. And then on top of that, if you're comfortable donating, there's definitely an option to do that as well. Let's go ahead and get into the breakdown. So these are just the various damage profile and stuff like that for the XM4. Uh, we got the damage, which is 30, effective damage range, muzzle velocity, all that stuff. We also have movement, but it's in miles per hour. I went ahead and converted that to meters per second since pretty much that's how we've collected data when it comes to modern warfare. So we can kind of give a head-to-head -head comparison of why it feels like you're moving faster or not when it comes to one game over the other because I asked several people, hey, which one do you think was faster after me knowing the actual difference? And people were split. Some people said Modern Warfare felt a little bit faster and some people said Cold War felt a little bit faster. So we're gonna talk about those individual things. It's really gonna come down to what weapons you were using and how you were using them. Also a quick side note, I think Prestiges might be coming back because if you leveled up a weapon all the way to max, as you can see right here, there's a little bit of section for Prestiging. If I press the triangle button right here, you can see what happens when you click on that. It says reset the weapon level for the XM4 and relock all attachments similar to how we've done that in the past exchange you'll be able to have a clan tag which i would imagine you'd be able to have a kill counter stuff like that that we've had in the past so maybe this is a foreshadowing to the prestige system in the full game now let's go ahead and talk about the comparison of the weapons head to head so during the beta i went ahead and tracked all the different weapon stats that are displayed in game and i, and I specifically chose certain weapons that appear in both games we got the xm4 the ak-47 xm4 is very similar to the m4 we have the mp5 the milano which is basically the uzi and then i put their stats head to head and what you'll notice is when you convert the miles per hour of the 10 point whatever we end up with these individual numbers here and i went across converted them for all the various weapons that were available in the beta obviously once the second week comes out i'll be able to look at those weapons and then feel those in as well so what we do is take a look here anytime this is red that means that cold war is slower in that particular stat so movement speed for the m4 or xm4 it is slower by about two you know almost three percent two and a half percent there the difference in the sprint is 33 percent slower and the ads movement speed is significantly slower for rifles and then when you can see it gets green over here when we get over here to the mp5 and the uzi here's what it looks like in cold war we got the movement sprint shooting and then the aiming down sight movement speed um, and then we have it compared to here this is just the base no attachments obviously you can min max certain weapons for a particular stat but right here what we're looking at here is it's a little bit slower in movement sprint is way slower but when it comes to ads speed cold war is cracked out of your mind when it comes to ads speed for smgs as well as over here, snipers are a little bit faster. We got the Pellington. Um, I compared that to the AX-50. Uh, we have the 1911. You can see that that one is significantly faster in straight, even though the movement isn't significantly faster. And then the shotgun, uh, I compared it with the Origin. It is faster in terms of ADS speed. And most people think that's not a big deal. But as they incorporate weapons from Cold War into Warzone, you're going to have an MP5 from Cold War and an MP5 from Warzone or Modern Warfare. And they're going to be both in the same exact game. 
and you are going to expect them to handle, you know, handle differently. They're not going to have the same rate of fire, same damage, and anything like that. That would defeat the point of adding the weapons since so many of the weapons tend to overlap in Call of Duty. And for those of you thinking that, oh, you know, it's not a big deal, this is a complete meta shift. Primarily in Modern Warfare and Warzone, the, the SMGs are primarily not as good as the rifles. That's why the typical meta is always rifle and the MP5 just is reign supreme. But one of the things that separates a lot of the weapons, or at least brings the rifles in line with them, allows you to use them up close, is because of the handling properties. But they take a huge nerf, and you're going to actually see what that looks like in game. I, I actually forced the attachments with these ones here to make it so that they have the same ADS strafe speed, so that you can actually see how big a difference this is. And the advantage is going to lean towards the SMGs. And that's why I think the Uzi was so dominant in the beta, the Milano, and the MP5 is going to be good. Just because that movement speed makes you a harder target to hit. Uh, if you're a harder target to hit, that obviously means you're going to win more gunfights. Even if they're a little bit further at range, you're just not that easy to hit. Also, uh, for controller players, if you get in the habit of strafing, you get a little bit more rotational aim assist, which allows you to kind of stick on the target a little bit more. So let's go ahead and take a look at those clips side by side. You guys determine for yourself whether or not that's a big difference. All right, so I've put the strafe speeds head to head with the time. I'm basically strafing across shipment so you can kind of see that comparison. On the left, we have Modern Warfare, the speed that is for the regular uh, M4. If we slow down that strafing speed, we can actually get it towards rifle strafe speed in Cold War, uh, which is the 1.815. That's very close. It's a negligible difference. Um, but you're going to see the difference on screen as we put these head to head, that there is a actual noticeable difference. And this is going to impact every gunfight. Um, obviously, there's sliding and other mechanics that are a little bit different between game, game to game, especially with tax sprint and auto tax sprint and stuff like that. You can see how much it already got there, like a 10 and a half seconds. This one took about 15. So now we got the Uzi head to head or the Milano. And on the left, we can see as 3.270 in Modern Warfare. In Cold War, it's at 3.822. And even if I stack this to have the fastest ADS strafing speed possible, the max I could get is 366. I think the only thing that goes above that is probably the pistol that we just talked about uh, when we were comparing those. But even then, that's over four. So you're going to get like the pistol strafing speed in Cold War. So they really want these, these closer range weapons to have tons more mobility when they're in a gunfight when strafing. And you're going to look at that comparison right here. And then I'm going to show you what cold war rifle versus cold war smg is going to look like you can see how much faster the one on the right is cruising by and then it hits the wall right around seven and a half seconds this one comes in a little bit slower obviously it's not a huge difference between these but keep in mind in cold war this one on the right the the milano actually strafes faster than that by an additional 0.2 or 0.16 more than that um, and now we'll look at the comparison between cold war cold war um, and keeping in mind, the one on the right will actually be faster in Cold War or was faster in Cold War. And that is without any additional attachments. Obviously, you could stack a little bit more ADS movement speed so that you couldn't you so you can strafe like that. But look at this comparison. It's just laughable how big a difference this is. So they start strafing at the same time. The one on the right's literally lapping the one on the left. You could have gone back and forth. Um, they already touched the wall. They barely <laughs> hit the middle of uh, shipment. Took about seven seconds. This one takes about 15. So that is the huge difference in strafing mechanics. So keep in mind that once they do incorporate some of these weapons, even though they're going to be named similar or look the same, the actual properties are going to behave significantly different once they start blending the, the, the weapons into the game. Obviously, there's certain things that they're going to just keep um, based off Modern Warfare. Maybe the melees are going to be similar to how Modern Warfare does it. Uh, but I would imagine that they'd have to change the properties slightly in some way, whether it's the strafe speed, the running speed, or whatever, so that you can actually incorporate and have two MP5s in one war zone, Cold War version and Modern Warfare version. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about that. One other thing that contributed to maybe you feeling like the game is way faster or slower is field of view. I did a full video on this. Basically, the higher you put your field of view, the faster it looks like you're moving. So if you raise your FOV, it's going to feel like you're just blazing through and moving significantly faster. So don't fall into that trap. If you, if you raise your FOV, you're moving faster because of that. Even though, in fact, most of the movement in Cold War is slower with the exception of the slide. Hopefully you did find the video helpful, learn something new. If you did, please do me a favor, hit that like button. If you're brand new, want to find your way back, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. 
A reminder, link near the top of the description. I will be live streaming for a two hour time slot between 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time as part of a charity live stream for gamers outreach, which again, like I said, will be linked near the top of the description. Appreciate all the support on the channel. Thank you for watching. And as always, have a great day.